Don't play the game, tell me wrong. I don't know those words. <sighs> I don't know. I've never heard that song before. I don't, is that Control? No, it's definitely not. Um, hot take right now because we, we were talking about Tarantino movies off air <laughs> because you messed up the recording. Yeah. Uh, Death Proof might be my least favorite Tarantino movie of all time. I don't think it, I don't know. People don't even think about it, do they? Do they think about it or even consider it in the conversation? I don't know. But with the whole Grindhouse experience, though, I think Planet Terror was definitely more of a surprise. For that sure. was Rodriguez, right? I, yeah, I think I think they put it first in that little sequence for a reason. Rodriguez, I love, I love Planet Terror. I think it's I think it's great. Rodriguez uh, stole my precious Johnny Quest movie from me. <laughs> It still hasn't been made. Exactly. <laughs> what the hell? I've got a draft in my desk drawer right now. If you want it, Warner Brothers. I'd love to work with you despite <laughs> talking so much shit about you and your DC films. We'll talk We'll talk about reboots and remakes and IP later, but I, I, I think like 10 to 15 years ago, a Johnny Quest screenplay would have been very interesting. Yes. I couldn't think of something I could care less about now. It would have been really cool if it came out around the time of like a, the first Transformers, maybe. So I could see it like even like eight years ago. Yeah. That was like 2007, 2008. I agree with that. I, I think I really would have enjoyed that at that time in my life. But, it, I mean, approach it like a young Indiana Jones type thing. And you can also, I mean, there's so much stuff you can do with that. I mean, it it should, it almost kind of reminds me of... Well, maybe not. I was going to say, it sort of reminds me of Jumper in, in the way that what? <laughs> it would purely be like a young kid traveling the world and going on this huge adventure, Indiana Jones style. You remember you remember that was like the big selling point in Jumper was just that it was cool that they went to so many locales because of this ability. I don't remember much about that movie. That was a horrible comparison. I should never have said that. I don't, I don't remember much about that movie, but um, I'm a big fan of- Rachel Bilson. I'm a big fan of superhero y movies that are is that an original property? Jumper? Is that's not like derived from a comic book. I don't think so. I, I'm a big fan of movies that do that, like we've talked about before Chronicle. I think Chronicle is a f- great movie. It is. I just love it. I'm a big fan. I didn't I didn't hear your point though. Was I don't think it well, was I'm clear. Just saying, I'm just saying you, ju- you jumper. Like, is, you like a superhero approach to things that aren't about superheroes? No, I like original. I like movie original movies that are about superheroes that aren't that nobody knows anything about. Like there's no existing, like Unbreakable. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. Huge fan of that content. Uh, you know what? Huge it, fan of that content. Is that I what you know. said? I don't know. That was it's a weird, weird word to use. It's weird. We've done so many podcasts <laughs> this past week. I know. Uh, I w- I think this weekend has been very interesting. Why? It has been dominated by Iron Fist mm-hmm. for us. That's literally just about all I've done this weekend. What episode are you on now? Um, I'm almost done with episode six. You wanted me to just spoil like four episodes for you. That way you could catch up to me. Was it that important? I just wanted to share watching something together that neither of us had seen. God, that's sweet. Yeah. Wow. I just. That's, but no, there was no way I was going to ruin four episodes for you. That's what I wanted. But um, <laughs> no. But Iron Fist and Drake <laughs> are the two things. Pretty much. That and, have consumed this weekend. And then the podcasting that goes into it, for sure. Exactly. This is like, this is like our third or fourth podcast in the past few days. And uh, Jay, why don't you tell the people what we've put out? Recently, uh, well, we just dropped an Iron Fist reactions video. Look, for people who have, I don't know if anybody's ever done a podcast before <laughs> about TV, but uh, we love podcasting about television. We, it's been something we've done for quite a while, and uh, it, podcasting about Netflix binge shows is a a Da Vinci Code that has yet to be, have been cracked. I really don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, I don't either, but I feel like there is a better way to do it than cuz some people would say, "Why don't you just do every episode and put them out for people?" That's fine, that's great, but I don't know anybody that's going to watch an episode, stop it, 
and go listen to a podcast about they it. They aren't. If, no one is. If they have the ability uh, to just continue watching. So we did this thing. It's like an Iron Fist reactions. We're both at completely different spots in the show. Um, and we sort of just podcasted about what we thought about it up to that point. Almost like a like a trailer reaction but for a season of a TV show. So we're going to do something wrapped up. Uh, there's a video on our YouTube channel. And there's a podcast about it on this podcast feed. So, But we actually have some big news. We kind of need to treat this opening segment a little bit differently than we do other Sight and Sound weeklies. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to discuss. But one of the other podcasts that we did, the four that I was including, was our very first episode together doing After Schmo on yeah. the Schmo's No uh, podcast network. It's on... Their iTunes feed is also on their Schmo Plus YouTube channel or SK Plus YouTube channel. And uh, that's a huge opportunity for it us. It is. And uh, we have had a lot of great reception on that first episode, and I'm really proud of it. And I think they're excited about it, and I just can't wait to uh, continue to do that for uh, the guys that I've been doing that for the past year or so. Uh, if some of you might know that I took some time off, but... But I'm back, and we're ba- we're back. So uh, thank you to all the support that we've uh, seen from Schmoville. Um, a part of that deal was that Sight and Sound Weekly was now going to appear on the Schmo Plus YouTube channel as Ex- exclusively. Yes, as a featured podcast. So if you go to the Sight and Sound YouTube channel, you'll still see it show up in our playlist. But it's not actually uploaded to our channel anymore. It goes to the SK Plus or Schmo Plus YouTube channel. And uh, we're really excited for all those Schmovillians to uh, start listening and hopefully liking and interacting with the things that we're doing over here at Sight and Sound because uh, this is our baby. We love doing this. We love talking about music, movies, and television. Um, and, and we're just really, really excited to have you over here. This and, is our uh, main gig. I mean, this is the, the other things are amazing. We love Let's Talk Legion. We love doing After Schmo. I love doing my uh, my music episode that I do on Fridays. But this is sort of the bread and butter of Sight and Sound. And I guess just to kind of pull back the curtain on things, one, one of the things that we were kind of honored with was this wasn't something that we tried to shoehorn in to sweeten the deal with the after schmo stuff i mean this was something that uh christian harloff sort of brought to us i mean i was surprised oh, by me too. when i heard it so i mean this I is said, christian said that to me and i said swear to zeus and uh he had no idea what i was talking about that's one of those inside jokes that i don't even really understand it's one of my common phrases okay. swear, to, swear to almighty zeus he has his own catchphrase guys <laughs> it's yeah okay Make a uh, t-shirt, put it on T public. Um, yeah, it's a cool opportunity, and I think for me personally, just as a just general fan of of that content of the Schmoes content, I think it's actually kind of exciting because n- nothing really exists like this uh, on, on the, the S- on the channel on yeah. the channel, and you know, you guys go to uh, some people go to Collider and stuff for movie content and various places for pop culture types of shows and now it's on the sk plus channel i think it's exciting look we don't know what (laughs) we don't know what sk plus channel future is like we don't nobody told us like what the you know what the roadmap is their vision for the future but the fact that we're involved in it uh is is i think exciting and i think it should be exciting to everybody else now i there's a lot of people listen to the show and this is gonna sound weird when i say this but sight and sound covers music movies and television sight and sound weekly is the cornerstone of our podcast and uh basically every single week we come here and we discuss uh, the hottest topics in movies music and television we usually dedicate i don't know however much time the shows we've gone three hours before we've gone two hours we've gone one hour it's just however much there is to talk about we we talk about it so yeah 
Yeah, and hopefully this drives you to our iTunes feed as well. If you're listening to this right now on iTunes and you've been a fan of ours for a while, uh, thank you, just bear with us. But if you're coming over from Schmoville, this is the weekly show, of course. That's why we call it weekly. But if you go to that iTunes feed or if you listen to our other content on our YouTube channel, you'll realize that we also dedicate standalone episodes. That Iron Fist reactions uh, that Jay mentioned before, that is not covered on weekly. Um, it's its own show, and you'll find that on our podcast feed. So weekly is not the only thing we do, uh, just so you understand. We do uh, sometimes a standalone movie review. So you might have heard our uh, Logan review with John Roca. That's its own thing. Jay does his music episodes. And you just introduced the the episode format of After Party, which is sort of like a wild card, do whatever we want type of show talk about whatever we want type of show it's not restricted to just pop culture so you can find all of that stuff if you travel over to our youtube page and our podcast feed on itunes and please of course feel free to rate and review on itunes yeah for sure the the thing that we say all the time is there's something for everybody on within the sight and sound podcast landscape um and hopefully if you're a movie person which i know there's probably a lot of people who are movie people and you guys don't really dive deep into music well maybe this is going to turn you on to something else or vice versa if you're a tv person or a music person maybe you'll get into movies uh it's kind of weird i feel like we just did our first episode yeah (laughs) sort of it does feel like that reaction but it's cool i'm really excited uh the response from the schmoville community has been incredible to me who's i'm somebody that you guys haven't heard much from so it's really cool that we're going to get to share all of this together. Uh, we sort of spend the top of the show just kind of, you know, breaking the ice a little bit. Brian right now is dressed in all black. He's wearing the same shirt that he wore yesterday. Because I haven't showered. Okay. You're also wearing uh, you, you did that thing. sweatpants? You did that thing where the when your arrival times are always a mystery to me. Because you'll text me and say, on my way. And we live like 10 miles from each other, but it always takes you 30 minutes to get to my house, and I've never understood it. And then earlier today, you told me that, what? let's get started around 12.30, and I'm like, okay, I can finish this episode of Iron Fist, I can take a shower at noon, and then you text me at noon saying, well, I'm already in your town, I'm going to pick up something to eat. So it's like, I have no idea if I still have time to shower or not. <laughs> and then and then you still showed up You showed up when I could have done all of this stuff. Because for whatever reason, it took you 30 minutes to grab your food and actually come over. So I like to take my time. You're, you're mis- it's always a mystery, your arrival times. I never I never get it. I don't know why it takes you so long to do everything. Well, first of all, I came from Lexington. I uh, had to take my... But that didn't matter. Because no. my, first, my first message from you was that you were already here. I didn't know when you left, wherever you came from. Yeah. Uh... See, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's just uh, tell me that you're gonna do better. It's a thing. It's a thing. So I'll try. I guess I'll try to to do better. How long before uh, Schmoville pick up on our silly inside jokes? I have no idea. Do we have to explain them again? No. It's just the things. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Anytime you listen to a new podcast, like I've been guilty about this because you like the Dan Lebetard show, and yeah. I've listened to it a handful of times now. It's not my thing, but. Uh, Part of the reason that is, it's hard to get into a podcast like in the middle of something when there's a cast of characters, uh, there's these jokes that you might not get, and, and all this stuff. You, the pacing of the show, that's something you just got to spend time with. I mean, I still laugh. I laugh at things because I know they're inside jokes, even when I don't know what they actually mean or what the history of it is behind it. So for a while, I was listening to Levitard and just laughing because I thought moments were funny, but yeah. I r- really was you know dumb and ignorant to everything that they were saying to each other um but that's kind of stuff you pick up on did you see that study that came out that said that uh most people or a lot of people listen to podcasts because they feel like that that's part of their like friends group friends group yeah 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 joe rogan has been talking about that for a long time that there's a lot of of people that, that live in the middle of nowhere who don't get to have the types of conversations that people have on podcasts or they don't have that type of friends group and you know it's that's sort of their way to feel like they're involved in those conversations but it is a double-edged sword because i've been listening to rogan for years i mean a long time a ton of episodes he has almost a thousand episodes do you feel like he's your best friend i don't because i i understand the wall between somebody that has no idea i exist do you remember that band the wall between no i don't 
They were, they were a local band. They were. It sounds like it. <laughs> it sounds like a local <laughs> band name. I can't believe you don't remember that. Anyway, I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, the so I'm sure there is a weird thing that people out there feel like they know people and they feel like they are friends. Whitney Cummings, a comedian, was on Rogan and made this comment recently about somebody came up to her while she was on a date and said, how's your knee doing? And she was like, what? <laughs> because on one of her podcasts, she had made a comment about that she was going to or she had, had knee surgery or something like that. I mean, can you can you imagine like? People, but why would she say what if she obviously she had a problem with her she name? She had, had no idea who this person it was. was take, okay, so she was taken aback by the fact that she had no idea this person would. She had know. no idea who the person was, and I guess one way or another, she forgot that she mentioned that on a podcast, and it was just some random person that knew this information about her. It, it I'm sure it's strange. I'm sure it's a little bit weird. I guess so. I'm sure that's happened quite a I mean, that can even happen. You don't have to be a celebrity. That can happen even on Facebook, I guess. Yeah, so, I, mean, I mean, we go... something stupid about, you know, a surgery you're having, and then someone could come up to you and do that. I mean, I go through that with the whole Legion thing. People coming up to me and asking me... Oh, God. Asking me to talk to them about Legion, and I just I don't really want to. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't want to. That makes you sound like a total dick. Well, I mean, look, like because you'll post about it, and I, and I'm guilty of this too. You'll post about it and try to get people involved. Like, hey, guess what? I host this Let's Talk Legion show. Um, come pay attention to me. Listen to our show. And then someone approaches you and actually wants to take an interest and talk to you about what you did, and yeah. then you shut them down. Well, let's be honest with the actual subject matter that we're talking about too. I don't know who has and who hasn't watched that show out there, but that show is a straight up mind fuck. And it's it's a little exhausting, like to think about it and to break it down. I mean, I don't know. I I would put that into the category of talking about politics and religion. It's just like politics, just, religion, and legion. Yeah, kinda. Hey, new podcast name called it. But I just, man, I don't know. It's such a crazy show to discuss that I sometimes I I have to be in the right mindset to do it. Like I feel mentally exhausted. So maybe you should explain that to the person instead of just shutting them down. Well, I kind of I don't just shut them down. I kind of just entertain them. See, you know? listen, this is like politics for me. I just can't do it right now. That's actually a good phrase. I'm I'm going to take that for sure. It's like politics for me. I can't do this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's another t-shirt for you. I I just can't. I don't know. It when we do the that podcast, I am legitimately exhausted mentally. I'm exhausted thinking it. about it right now. Yeah. I'm exhausted knowing that in like three days I have to watch the show again and do another show. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Imagine, <laughs> imagine all the misdirect, like when I'm reading through Reddit and stuff about what people are saying, and I'm just like, is this right? Is this right? It's, it's tough. It's a tough show to follow. But let's like get into Legion because we're we're gonna have Kevin Marks, <laughs> yeah, talking to us about it. Yeah, Kevin sent me a straight up book in my Twitter <laughs> DMs, which I love. I love him getting involved. And actually appreciate it. I read the entire thing, and this uh, is how he is. Yeah, he, yeah. I, I mean, me and him have had some uh, pretty in-depth conversations about things. I'm surprised he didn't call me out on some of my Iron Fist shit. Yeah, you all had a pretty a back and forth on Twitter. Walking Dead, I think, was our big one. Yeah, because anyway, well, you know, I don't, I can't stand that show. But I, I don't know how people are feeling about that show right now, just because. Well, the ratings are plummeting are they really yeah i had so many no people, idea you didn't know that so many people are falling off that show i now. had no idea yeah. but it just yeah. you saying that like the uh you know the, the zeitgeist just what sort of gets through to me i haven't seen as much about it like i honestly don't even know if it's on right now like is it still on is the uh, walking dead still uh, on the i think air so right now? I, I'm, I'm just saying that because i think i saw makuga post a picture about it. but like you know nine <laughs> times out of ten Whenever it airs, you see a ton of people talking about it on Twitter. I just I haven't seen anything about it, so it doesn't surprise me. So people are down on it. Yeah, yeah, interesting. But you know, they're still still talking thirteen seasons planned for it or something. They're still talking about how it has no ending. They're gonna go as long as they want to, and of course, they have the other stupid show that works alongside of it. So it's just like, when will it stop? Yeah, I've been I've been off that train for quite a while. Yeah, definitely, but. Look, let's let's dive. Do you have something else before we dive into music? No, I was gonna make the same transition you were. Or what? What order are we going in? Uh, music, movies, television. So or music, TV. Said, movies. Said something. You said something like a couple of weeks ago about how more life is your Star Wars, and I, I did. 
I was sort of around when we were previewing the episode. I haven't heard your preview podcast yet. How dare you? Um, Neither did Luke Jaggers, by the way, because he was literally reciting things, <laughs> asking me questions that I addressed uh, on that episode. And your attitude furious. about podcasting. Just listen to the show. I explain it all there. <laughs> I'm not going to entertain your... That's our first That's our first t-shirt. It says, uh, don't ask, just listen. <laughs> I, uh, I I was around for the preview uh, area of your uh, of of your life when it came to more life and were you I was there yeah we what we talk about it on this show we've been talking about it since we started sight oh, you just mean the hype like building the hype. yeah okay I mean I've been around I know what your thoughts and feelings were on it I have no I for, for the record I have no idea if anybody in the Schmoville community cares about Drake. I'm sure plenty of them do. I have no idea, though, if anybody likes him, hates him, whatever. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> I have no idea of what so many people in Smoville uh, he, he's, like or dislike. He's a re- cause it, Yeah, I, I don't know what people like with music around <laughs> sort of, these parts. Sort of an obvious statement with that. But. He's a very polarizing artist. Um, And I, I was also present in the room with you when it came out and we were listening to this i'm still not at all convinced that more life is the equivalent of how i feel about star wars episode eight it's not i watched your reaction well, that's you i was in the ro- no i'm talking about you oh, okay i'm talking about what i saw what you displayed last night listening to it and the conversation we didn't have any conversation about more life afterwards we, ha- we didn't even talk about it when you got here today before the show. I'm still calling your bluff, your attitude. I'm not saying you don't like it. That's not what I'm saying at all. I just... You have no idea how I feel about it. I What I've seen from you, your hype, your reaction, everything, does not equate to how I think you are going to feel about episode 8. Okay, well, first of all... I think it's a horrible comparison. First of all, the immediacy of of reacting to a movie versus an album is completely different. Any most music that I listen to, especially good music, I have to spend a lot of time with it before I can develop a proper opinion on. Like if there's people like I, I get furious when I go online hours after an album dropped and there's already a review for it. Like it, <laughs> it makes it makes legitimate no sense. I it's it's even been so bad where I have reviewed albums before and given them poor ratings and then spent more time with them and put them in my top 10 albums of the year list. So the immediacy of whether you like something or not with music is just completely different. Um, I would say it's completely different because what you just described, you can do that with movies too. You, you definitely can, but I mean, there's not as much, it's not as, as black and white as that. You know what I mean? Like you can't, I don't know. I don't really know the best way to explain it, but you, well, I understand that you do have twenty-two songs you have to learn. Well, yeah, and that's that's a uh, that's part. Maybe of Maybe that's the one one thing that's going against what I'm saying right now. Well, that's part of it. Look, the the build up, the build up of excitement is where I I equate those things. I mean, I'm online all the time leading up to a Drake release, figuring out who's <laughs> going to be on it. Now it's when is it coming out? How am I going to listen to it? who the producers are. I mean, I, I'm obsessed with these things and we'll talk about it more when we talk about the album, but I, I get pumped about shit like this, man. I mean, is it, first of all, star Wars for me, I get very excited for star Wars, but it's not like the thing that I fanboy over the most. Drake's not the thing that I probably, I'm just, I'm just using your words. Most. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying like, it's, I, I'm not saying it's a direct tit for tat sort of thing. Like, I'm not saying that, the excitement that I get over something is legitimately the equivalent. Like they're interchangeable with one another. What I'm saying is it's not even my star Wars in general. It's my excitement for this Drake album coming out is similar to your excitement for star Wars. That's what, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't see it, but regardless, all you do is listen to Jedi council and, and I think, do what Christian tells you. I to think do. I just wanted you to like freak out or i just wanted to see you get excited because i never see you get excited about anything did you see i was looking forward to sharing this experience with you you were feeling bad i walked in 
that doesn't matter. I walked into <laughs> your room and you're just sitting back in your recliner with a vape in your mouth, and it wasn't was any different than any other day. I that was I've worried spent with if you. you were being entertained or not. That's not true. <laughs> it is true. Did you see God. how excited I was when Kanye was on this album? You, <laughs> your exact words were, "Oh, that's Kanye," and then that was it. Yeah. Oh well, excited. now you're now you're smirking and smiling pretty big. I right was now. stoked. I like to have a little bit of a poker face when I go into these things. So okay, the the headline though is that more life has dropped. For those of you who don't know, Drake's uh, latest quote unquote playlist is now available pretty much everywhere. It's definitely on Spotify, right? It it's not an exclusive. Well, one of the most interesting things to come of this is that regardless of the fact that. Drake has a deal, a $19 million deal with Apple. Nobody knows exactly what that means, but he has a $19 million deal with Apple. He's more of like a, a spokesperson, an ambassador for the brand, but a lot of people thought that that was going to come with exclusive uh, exclusivity to his music. We have saw it with, uh, with Views. Views was out for like, I think a week maybe, exclusively on Apple Music. The only thing exclusive about this was that he premiered the album live on Apple Music, uh, on his show, OVO Sound Radio. But the album itself, it is available everywhere. It's available wherever you want to listen to music. That's interesting to me. That is a, a show of, I don't know. I don't know if maybe that's him backing off of, of this whole thing or if, because it's technically not seen as a 100% official album. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the difference of a mixtape, a playlist, and a full album is I don't anymore. Either. I don't even really think it's that important. Yeah, I think it's something that... I just kind of rolled my eyes when I heard that announcement. I think it's something that people in the hip-hop and rap community like to throw a label on when they just haven't put as much care and effort into something. <laughs> but Well, if it sounds worse, it wasn't actually a feature full length, so... Yeah, I think it gives him a little bit of, of an excuse, but Chance the Rapper's coloring book was technically, as he would call it, a mixtape, won Grammys. Uh, Drake's last mixtape was, if you're reading this, it's too late. I think it's probably his best work that he's ever done, uh, which is why I was excited for this album. Coming off, of the, uh, coming off of Views, which was supposed to be a magnum opus, so to speak, that literally was talked about two years before it came out. Uh, was hyped up two years before it came out. What we got with that was a, a letdown. It was a little bit of a letdown. Um, I think that album has good songs on it. I think I enjoy some of the songs on it, and I've, it's grown on me. But the entire album itself, the what we got was not uh, really up to par with what Drake typically delivers. And it was a little bit of a bait and switch on what people were expecting from that album completely different stylistically actually made no sense it was like a hodgepodge of ideas it just it, it just wasn't oh, you mean executed. like life of pablo it's very similar to life of pablo but the difference between life of pablo is uh it's unlistenable kanye is a much more artistic individual than drake is uh there are things that you, artistic there are things that you can read into with uh kanye west projects as opposed to drake's projects which 90 percent of everything he speaks about are the exact same thing so what's your reaction to more life now that, now that you've heard it a little bit you've definitely heard it more than i have uh, well first of all the way that the album began with the song free smoke was already an improvement on more life with more life he started the album off with a piano ballad <laughs> which made no sense <laughs> considering we were in the we were in the era of drake going as hard as he's ever gone before he had this edge about him that he had never really had you had songs like back to back uh you had songs like summer 16 and even the entire if you're reading this it, i'm sorry uh yeah if you're reading this it's too late project and then to start off the album like that was just a complete i mean it didn't make any sense it was not what we were sort of expecting <laughs> from it and not in a good way uh to start off the album like this was great i think it was a great callback to where he's come from he sort of said in an interview before this came out that he was sort of wanting to go in a new direction with his career. We've seen that with songs like One Dance, with songs like Controla, Hotline Bling, Fake Love, sort of those more pop songs, those more straightforward pop songs. 
Um, but he did say I, lo- it, I love when Drake does pop. I know you do. We we've discussed this. I I think uh, well in in the interview itself, he said that there's always going to be some some version of the rap songs that everybody knows and loves from my past because that's what got me to the dance. That's what people love. I'm always going to respect that and pay homage to that. And uh, he did that at the very beginning of this album. Um, Let me ask you this question. So you like those songs, but in the album itself, we got a lot of those pop songs, sort of the more dance songs, the, the dance hall style, odd rhythm sort of, you know, uh, Somebody called them island songs or tropical vibes. <laughs> well, there is one called Passion Fruit. That sounds like an island song. There is one called Passion Fruit, and they were sort of all lumped. I also had one of those for lunch. They were sort of all lumped together. How did you feel about that sort of segment in the album? Oh, you realize that I have, I barely even heard it. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't in the room when this started. Okay, so well. So I've retained practically none of the album. I just pure, I w- was wanting to hear you talk about it. Okay, that's fine. Well, regardless, the, he had a similar thing on Views where he lumped these together. But this album is is pretty fantastic. It's from front to back, it is I, such an enjoyable listening experience. I have liked what I've heard so far. Yeah, it like I, at no point have I felt like any of the songs were not placed in the right position from one another. So you like when things are lumped in that way instead of spread thin? Not necessarily, but I want them to make sense. I I want the the tone of the album to make sense transitioning from song to song, idea to idea. On views, he would have these dancey island songs and then thrown in there he would have a weird uh, like one of those spoken word songs where he's trying to get a lot off his chest about his relationship with his mother. And then it would go into like this. Really she was even on the album. She was right. She was on this how many, one. How many times did she do that? Just was once. that just once? Just once. I thought it was a couple times. No, it was just once. She's been on things before, I believe. But and then he would throw in like a song where he's going hard and then back to another dance. It just didn't make any sense. But this album played exactly like a playlist when you make a playlist you need it to have peaks and valleys you know you have your dancey moments and you have your slow song and then you kind of come back up your hype tracks and it played just like that so much so that he actually gave other artists a platform on this thing to do their own thing there are songs what is that bug it's a ladybug trying to hit my window that's you know how many ladybugs i've killed in my room in the past month that's bad luck right that i've killed them or that Killing it's here. a ba- ladybug is bad luck. I have killed probably like three dozen this month. Interesting. I have no idea where they're living in my house. That has nothing to do with Drake's more life. Well, um, there is a song called "Killing a Ladybug" on the album, but go ahead. No, there's not. But the uh, I don't even remember, what was I talking about. Oh, I have no idea. <sighs> I think we were talking about more oh, yeah. life by we're, Drake. We're talking about uh, artists having a platform on this thing. There are individual songs on this album that don't even feature Drake at all. Sampha has a song called 4422, which in my opinion is one of the best songs on the entire album from an artist who is absolutely killing it right now. Sampha's album process is the best album I've heard this year. It's pretty good. And did you, have you listened to it or are you just saying I that? listened to the whole thing did when you it really? came out. Yes. Oh, okay. We talked about it. We did. That's right. I forgot. I have a terrible memory. Uh, he had a song on this album and it confused me the first time I listened to it, like, why is he, as much as I like it, why is he doing this? That song is in the same key as the song that follows it. So Drake essentially took pieces, bits and pieces of that song and rapped over it in the song right after that. Uh So much so that if you listen to those songs back to back, they transition from one to another absolutely perfectly. And if you listen to both songs back to back, it gets you so hyped by the time Drake comes into that song. And I fucking love it, man. That And those are things that he has not done in quite a while. Not since, if you're reading this, it's too late. Not since nothing was the same. He actually took the time to think about how this thing was put together, just like you should do when you're making a playlist. You don't just throw songs on a playlist if you're going to give it to somebody. Sure I do. If you're making a playlist for somebody, for your boo thing... If you're making a playlist for me, I want I expect you to put some time into it. I want to know why you picked whatever track one, wh- why it was supposed to be track one. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Okay, you're not, but that's what I expect. Never make me a playlist. I don't want that. to. 
Okay. I never want to. It'll never live up to your expectation. Fair enough. Regardless, uh, I think the thing is a really enjoyable listening experience. One of the most pleasurable I'm, I've I'm heard from in a while. I'm just thrilled and relieved that you actually liked it. Like in general, like you quoted before, I never really know how you feel about things because um, you always send mixed messages about how you feel. But that's not true. I was I was worried. I didn't want you to go into this dark place. That Drake, you know, because I knew how you thought about views. I didn't want you to get depressed over this. I was furious and, about and, views. And start to question. I don't, it's not that big of a deal. I don't know why you're so mad at views. It's not, I mean, you, it's fine. You don't know, you don't know what it was like. <laughs> you have no idea. I don't know what it's like to, uh, to be love a Drake massive fan of The Six God. You're absolutely right. But I listened to plenty of songs from that album and i'm totally fine with it i know because that's the type of music listener you are you're you're more of a singles guy you had the shittiest uh that's Spotify. not true you had the shittiest spotify experience uh in your top songs. but those weren't singles i know they were random songs but they weren't particular singles from those albums anyway that's another story for another time but uh again i'm just glad that the sun is shining today that you're not going into this dark place um but my my quick reaction too is that I was I was pretty happy with what I heard actually. So I actually can't wait to dive deep into it a little bit more. It delivered on what you it, expect from Drake. It yeah it, it it takes you like you said it takes you a while to digest. It's gonna take me even longer to learn and digest this album. But uh, I'm actually looking forward to it. I was actually I don't know if I told you, but I was excited to listen to this. Like I, know. I, I was excited to hear new Drake. I saw you listening. I saw you preparing yourself it, listening to I was Hotline talk- Bling the other day. Yeah, I was uh, talking to my cousin uh, right before it came out, and he was telling me about he had some really neat and fun experiences anticipating an album in that way, uh, waiting for it to drop online at midnight, and that's not something I've really ever done, like ever. Yeah. Like, I, I've stayed up for the video game releases, uh, for TV, like with Iron Fist, I've done that a couple times. Um, of course, movies, I've been to countless midnight showings, but... It was never a thing for music, even when I really, really loved music. So uh, to to kind of share that with you was kind Aww. of exciting. Well, yeah. one of my favorite one of my favorite experiences was, uh, and sort of not where this started because Beyonce had the surprise album release with uh, her with sort of her last two albums, but when if you're reading this, it's too late. Came out randomly one night uh, during the like on a work night. I stayed up a little later than I should have and uh drake announced if you're reading this it's too late on instagram and i went to it and i was like holy shit there's a new drake album (laughs) and i like remember listening to it and just being blown away by it but you know it's weird for me because i like i said before if you're reading this it's too late is my favorite drake album a hundred percent but i can't compare this new project more life to that because this is a transition for drake there are so many songs in this album where he is going into a new direction into a new level the production on this album is unbelievable which was a huge misstep on views the the production on this thing is something we have never heard from drake drake has made a name for himself with these sort of really uh you know really chilled out beats very uh, minimalistic stripped down relaxed beats and this thing is a complete 180 it is colorful it's bright it's, it's vivid. fire it's hd the the beats on the <laughs> thing sound high definition uh that has a lot to do with some of the producers he's surrounding himself with right now like 1985 uh who made the hotline bling beat sort of kind of stole it from drum but uh, he's done a lot of really cool stuff. Majid Jordan, who makes really interesting production decisions. That's really cool that he's surrounding himself with that. Also, the fact that Kanye West is on this album. I I posted about it in one of our group texts. I said, if Kanye gets, I'm sorry, if Drake gets Kanye or Beyonce on this album, it is a statement. And it is a statement because these two guys are absolutely at the top of their game, so to speak, in, in the sort of, pop hip-hop and rap music genres and for him to get him on that album is is incredible i does it does it tease a potential collab album between the two they have been teasing that for the last three or four years 20 years they literally live down the road from each other Uh, allegedly they have two out entire albums worth of material to release but 
uh, it's crazy. I would love to know when that song was recorded, if it was before uh, Kanye sort of lost his mind and had to go <laughs> into the hospital or if it was recorded more recently. That would be fascinating uh, to find out. But negatives with it, it's a little long. Let's be honest. A little long, it's too long. It's almost, it's like an You could trim that bad boy by seven songs. I think it's over an hour and a half. Jesus Christ. And that's that's a little long. And not to mention it does peter out towards the end. Like towards the end, I'm like, these songs are clearly not as good as some of the rest of them. So also not a huge fan of Young Thug and yeah, just not very impressed with some of that stuff. But nonetheless, I was surprised when I turned around and a new song played and you knew some of the words to it. Oh yeah, because he sampled uh, J-Lo. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting because of the stuff that's been going on in the tabloids, Jay. Because you know I love my celebrity gossip. No, he uh, he referenced J Lo and I think Free Smoke. He did his line saying that he texted her and it ended up being an old number or something like that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Where did that come from? That sample. That was just very. I don't remember obscure. the song. I don't remember the song, but uh, you know, uh, uh, if you had my love and I gave you all my trust, would you comfort yeah. me? That was like late '90s. I mean, that was like when I came home from school and watched TRL. A great sample too. That song yeah. slaps. I mean, for real. It's oh, legit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I think it lived up to the hype. Uh, excited to spend more time with it. I will be having a review at some point, probably on our YouTube channel. Um, I'm excited to see what other people think about it, too. But so far, I think a lot of the response was pretty was pretty good. I, Luke Jaggers, he... The Ringer loved it. Did they really? Yeah. They said it was a, a huge step in his career. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's... Look, one of the things that Drake is doing is he's going more global, not just with those more sort of tropical sounding dance hall songs that he's doing, but uh, getting a little bit more of a Latin flavor, but also crossing over and sort of highlighting some of the stuff going on in grime music, Mm -hmm. which grime is a UK based, uh, UK based hip hop genre. Um, He he had Skepta on the album, who is a huge artist in in that Uh, gigs is another huge artist. Uh, in that sort of subgenre that hasn't crossed over completely into uh, American music, but I think he's giving them a great platform as well. So I'm excited about it. Hopefully, other people enjoyed it. Some people just don't like Drake because of his shenanigans, and I don't think he takes himself too seriously, and he likes to get in his feels. But uh, so reviews coming soon on the YouTube channel. Reviews coming soon on the Sight and Sound YouTube channel. I'll be breaking it down. Real nice, like real nice. Uh, let's transition into TV. Okay, let's and talk about some. I wanted to television. update you real quick while you were talking about Drake. I made a joke about Kevin Marks uh, posting a, a elongated text uh, about Iron Fist. And while you were talking, he actually did that on our YouTube channel. So shout out to Kevin. Did he Marks. slide on in dark, to those DMs? No, he posted a huge ass comment. As I'm showing you how long it Amazing. is. Amazing. Good job, Kevin. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't wait to read that when we're done recording. Kevin never fails us with what, his comic book knowledge. Was that on the Iron Fist thing? Yeah, on the Iron Fist video, yeah. I, at this point, I think he's just showing off. Kevin? Yeah. I mean, he's very knowledgeable. He had a lot to say. I think that I was skimming through it. I think he had less to say about the comics, but he was just talking about the TV show. There's going to be a lot of people listening to these now who are more, uh, more in-depth like comic book lovers and stuff. Can we have like a a comic book uh, comment off? <laughs> <laughs> a competition between <laughs> Kevin Mark holds the comic crown. Kevin Mark, the com- comic comic. Kevin Mark holds Kevin Mark the comic book comment crown. Yes, he does. He holds. He kills the, it. He holds the C three uh, championship right now. If somebody wants to just have an all out fact off with <laughs> Kevin Mark, how is it a C three comic book crown? Comic book comment crown. Comment crown. I heard. Yeah. I didn't hear the comment thing. I'm a big fan Excuse of my. What is that? An alliteration? Um. Yeah, it would be. Big fan of those. So, <laughs> let's transition into TV. We have not had a real proper discussion about the leftovers on this podcast. I don't think. I, I don't mean, think we, most people have had a proper discussion about the leftovers. Yeah, probably not. But it's something that we have to discuss for two main reasons. It's one of our favorite shows. It might even be one of the best shows uh, that I've ever seen. Dep- that's that's not hyperbole. It's I, not. I've I've it's not. I've said before, I'll say it again. If this third season 
goes well, it could be considered as one of the, the best TV shows of all time. Easily. Hands down. So that's the first reason. The second reason is not enough people watch it. And unfortunately, this is the final season, so there's not really much we can do about it at this point. But this conversation that we're having right here, right now, is early enough to where people can get involved in this show. And I would love to see people follow along with this because I, I, I really, really can't stress enough. This is the best show that people just didn't watch. And I know that that gets thrown around a lot. But I truly, truly believe it. This is like the, the one that's concrete for me. So if I use it in any other point, feel free to call me out and say, actually, it's The Leftovers. Um, it's nuts. The, the premiere, the season three and uh, the final season premiere is on April 16th. So we're just barely less than a month away. And I'm freaking out. It's been a long time, been like a year and a half since we've seen this show. Um, I want to talk about the final trailer. Because it just came out on YouTube a couple days ago. Um, and I also want to sort of include everything that are w- without spoilers, of course, because we want people to jump on the show if you haven't already. But um, I want to talk about this final trailer and what it might mean. So if you're afraid of our conversation, don't be. Don't be. Uh, here's okay. I do have to preface this because we've talked about this before. I once, I once issued you a challenge which you have not fallen, followed through with. Because you know how hard that is? I know. Did you see the story about the guys that put together the Breaking Bad movie and it took them five years? Yeah, that's cool. Or two years? That's cool. Maybe I just completely made up that length of time, but it was several years. So, The Leftovers is an incredible show. It is also a very, very emotionally dense show. I mean, it, it covers some some pretty hard topics involving like family member loss and... Grief. Grief, uh, depression... Uh, crazy stuff the first season as good as it is is tough to get through it it is just a very very depressing show i think that goes without saying the second season is a little bit more a little bit more light a little bit more fun i would say fun yeah hell yeah i don't know about that dude i mean i, w- I was just gonna el- use the word genre when i say when i say fun i mean it's a little bit more enjoyable exciting it's more exciting, but I wouldn't say fun is the word. I would say it's more of a fun ride. I definitely think there are t- ah. there are times in in that season where I was just like, "Holy shit, this is crazy nuts!" And yeah. I had fun with that. Well, so, I mean, I had those moments even in the first season. So but- I will say, just <laughs> as as much as I like the first season. There are going to be some people that watch it for the first time and have a tough time. Just get through it. I agree. Just get through it. Do yourself a favor and watch. Get through it to watch season two of The Leftovers. It is season two of The Leftovers is an anomaly. It's it is the the leap not only in quality, but it's like a movie. It's where, like a movie where the where that show goes between the end of season one and season two is mind blowing to me. And it's unprecedented. I don't think I can't compare it to anything else. And they they show you how drastic the contrast between seasons are in the opening, the cold opening of the second season. Yeah, the way the Which second season opens literally is like you're watching a completely different. So television that show. first episode, the entire episode as it exists is a cold open. But it really is. It also has its own cold open at the beginning of that episode. In the first ep- episode of season two, you don't even see any of the main characters from the first I know. season. It's awesome. <laughs> it's it's crazy. great. I'm literally cheesing about how much I love this no, show. Not not to mention the, not to mention the second season as well. I mean, just opens so many doors and possibilities about the world that you're uh, that you're sort of dropped into that were sort of, I think, they're touched on and hinted at, and you think that they could be coming, but the fact that they dive super deep into it, um, is it's shocking. It's definitely shocking. We're probably going to have a Leftovers recap or some kind of podcast episode to episode on Sight and Sound. Um, you're going to hear me talk a lot about how well this show sets up its environment and the world building, because... The show, maybe we should talk about what it's about. The show is about the 
end of the world. An event. It's about an event that took 2% of the world's population, which sounds like a small number, but it's, it's, it's a lot of people that just instantly vanished at one moment on October 14th. And it's about, it's not about those people who disappeared. It's about the people that are left on the planet, um, dealing with this grief and the fact that they not only don't have answers, but probably will never get answers. It's about how they have to live their lives. And I think it's actually very parallel to actual life. Um, maybe not as depressing as most people's lives, but, um, and that's like, 2% Two percent, pun intended, of what the show actually deals with, because the way that it builds, the way that Damon Lindelof, the showrunner, uh, built this uh, universe based on this book, it's incredible to me. He has been so creative. Him and Tom Parada, who actually wrote the book, uh, pretty much design the way that the show is going to work, and the things that they built and created based on that concrete platform it's it's insane the th- it's so so dense like you said and creative and the places that they go and it gets even more genre similar to how uh lost ended up being you think it's just one thing and the farther you get along you are willing because i, I care so much about these characters i really really do the garvey's um i i they watching them and their hearts break make my heart break and that's part of what you were talking about the fact that it was so emotionally dense and you're able to go along through these crazy and sometimes wacky events um because you care so much about it well damon lindelof of of lost fame i feel like this show benefits from him doing lost because you know i i love lost it's one of my all-time favorite tv shows but i think being on a show that had such a long run in so many episodes, I think he benefited in, in his storytelling approach with this show. I think you see some of the, uh, some of the benefits and some of the advantages he had from learning things doing lost. And the fact that this show is only going to be three seasons, that, that brevity that you have to tell a story. I think sometimes as fans, we get bummed out that we don't get to spend as much time with it, but, what he's delivering episode to episode, what you're getting in the episodes you're getting is absolutely fantastic. It also has to be said that this was a show, one of the reasons people, one of the reasons we're gushing about it and a lot of people don't know about it is because this show was absolutely snubbed in award season the year it came out. It wasn't just critically well received. It was towards the top, even at number one on some people's lists, on some major television uh, review publications or television publications, and just nothing. There was not one nomination for it to be found. I have no idea why that is. Well, you said when it came out, but it's even more so snubbed uh, the past year, the second season. That's what I meant. Because the second, the second season is like light years beyond what was accomplished in season one. Well, even if you go back on and look at what some people said about the first season, it wasn't – it wasn't mixed by any means. It was still overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive, but more of, of in like the 80%. The second season was like upper 90% ratings. It was the best season of television I saw that year, and it came out uh, the same time as Mr. Robot season one, yeah. which we both hold in high regard as well. Extremely high regard. Two of the, two of the best t- television seasons I've ever seen on TV. And they came out alongside each other, essentially. Yeah. So, it, that was a great time. So let's talk about this this trailer. I mean, there for people that haven't watched the show at all, you are almost equally as in the dark as we are <laughs> about going into season three. Yeah. There's a been a huge time gap. Not a huge. There's been a time gap. Significant time gap. From seasons two and seasons three. There's a, another location shift. Again, that's not spoiling anything. No. no. And these individuals, they're obviously still going through tragedy and turmoil and and loss and dealing with this crazy event, but there's an entire new world, an entire new perspective that some of our main characters have on things that I honestly have no idea 
how their interactions are going to deal or are going to be dealt with in season three. That trailer somehow pitched like eight new layers and concepts that they're going to introduce, which makes me think that we're going to take that same quality jump easily from season two to season three. I think it's going to do the exact same thing. And I think that somehow, some way, even though my mind can't grasp it, it's going to be even better than what we saw. The the show actually does has always done a great job of carrying this this overarching mythology while also focusing directly on characters. There are times when certain TV shows they'll do an entire episode focused around one character, and sometimes I like it, and sometimes I get annoyed. Like anytime they did, uh, you know, it, it, and like four episodes into a ten episode series, sometimes it does feel like that you've barely moved. But anytime they did a Jin episode on Lost, I just didn't care. I don't think, yeah, I don't think that has that problem though, but because I still exactly. care about these characters. Watching this trailer alone, somehow in the trailer, they were they managed to isolate how different characters in the show are dealing with things different ways. That I'm excited to learn about that. Like, why is this character feeling this way while the other character is feeling a complete opposite way? They do such a good job isolating individual character stories within this television show. Did you see some parallels with Kevin and Jack Shepard from Lost? Uh, they had a beard. Yeah, one. Uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about is the fact that they had beards. One one's beard looked much much better. Yeah, it was I'm, obviously Justin Theroux because of he's, course he's the best looking person he's on the a planet. G. He's Justin Theroux is definitely a G. I've never uh, heard you say somebody's a G. I you've thought never heard me say thing. that. I don't think so. Do you like that? I say it all the time. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, so, yeah, I think <laughs> there are definitely some parallels there uh, yeah. with the two. I don't know how much you want me to elaborate on that because we really can't without diving into spoiler territory. I'm just Look, saying. This- I'm also, I, I was also shocked to see that the uh, Murphys, um, and I'm not going to go into it, but the family that was a part of season two, just because in the trailers we hadn't seen any side of them until now so i'm kind of surprised that they're uh still involved in the process especially even with the location shift so it seems like all the characters have still stuck together um through this time and that was uh, another huge takeaway it's a crazy thing to think about the fact that we're going into a third season of a tv show and we have legitimately no idea like all we all we have to go by is pure speculation as to what's going on like i talk about it all the time with star wars star wars fans have a a great time theorizing is this character connected to this character from this book in the past or this one that they alluded to Da, 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 da and i think sometimes we lose sight of the fact that we might not know anything about anything. And this is a completely brand new story. So let's have fun just learning about it. And in fact, as fun as it is to theorize about those things, it's equally as fun to be shocked by by what you're saying, to not know anything. Ignorance is bliss. And that's legitimately what this third season is. We have no idea what is going to happen. But just from the trailers that they're showing me, I am hyped as fuck to see (laughs) what is going to unfold i i would actually would you suggest people who have no idea what the show is to just watch this trailer because you you said Uh, it off air you uh, said it off air that that someone who just watched this trailer for the very first time without having any context of the show knows just as much as we do i i think even though we've seen two seasons i think that might be a little counterproductive because so, like for instance, when I remember I was on board to watch Taboo, and then I watched like a pretty in depth trailer about it, and I had no idea what the show could even remotely be about, and it actually turned me off to it. <laughs> so, you know, people like that show, right? I know, but and I know I'm fully aware of that. And, Season two, and that could just be me, like that could just be me and my take. I'm gonna say watch the trailer, but uh, just be open to watching the show, like. Because I have no idea what's going on. I don't know anything about what's going on in uh, this trailer. Sort of, I do. I mean, there are certain things that happen, but uh, I've watched two seasons of it, and I have no idea what the plot could possibly be about. Yeah, me neither. But there are a lot of really interesting shots. Uh, all the stuff that takes place on out on the ocean, and there's some kind of like boat. 
like all those stuff. Well, there's I, actually what is that? There's actually a lot of things that are going on in the trailer that if you remember certain incredibly significant events of season 2, they stick out as being oh shit we're doing certain things again. Right. I could see that. Yeah, that yeah. was one thing that I considered. Certain things including a bathtub. Yeah. Definitely. Which were part of my favorite things happening in season two. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, yeah, I, we can't stress this enough. The whole point of this conversation was to get people excited. Please please start The Leftovers right now on HBO. Um, yeah, Jay said it best. First season, it might be depressing and hurtful at times, but I think it's the quality outweighs all of that. I mean, I loved, uh, I loved binging that first season again. Uh, to prepare for season two i know that i tried yeah i was gonna say i don't think that was very popular amongst uh, some other people that we know that enjoy the show um i've i've gone so far to say i would never just outright suggest this but i've said before that you it might be fine to just skip the first season no i'm God. just saying i'm just saying there that's so if ridiculous people try, or try this try watching the second season and then treating the first season like a prequel why is it okay for movies to do it, but but we're not supposed to do it for TV? I've stumped you. He he's thinking about it. No, I just think it's ridiculous. I'm gonna. You're do, just not thinking outside wh- of the box. No, what I'm gonna do to pre- okay, you just decided what I'm gonna do to prepare for the third season. I'm gonna watch season two first and then season one. I will do it that way, and okay. I'll tell you how I feel about it on this podcast. Okay, cool. Um, watch the leftovers on HBO. Let's take a break. Let's and take then a break. I have to pee pee because I've had too much coffee. When we get back, we're going to talk about sweats. we're going to talk about this Matrix reboot. If you absolutely cannot get enough of sight and sound, we have you covered on all bases. You can always find us on all of our social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram by looking up at Sight Sound Pod. It's the same for both. Make sure you check us out there. Also, make sure you're liking our Facebook page because we want to get some good conversations going between our listeners and one another. So search for us on Facebook. Just search Sight and Sound. Use the ampersand. We're also on YouTube. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's get back to the show. We're back from Jay getting yelled at on the internet to uh, talk about... <laughs> I have been. To, <laughs> I mean, chill out. Yeah, ever since you started Sight and Sound and putting up video content, you just get yelled at by everybody. I know, that's true. Those diehard, highly suspect fans. From first to last fans. The Path fans. The Path fans, yeah. Um, Wait till you hear what I have to say about Marvel movies. What? I'm just, I was making a joke that uh, I was trying to make people freak out that I didn't like Marvel movies, Boo. but I do. I do like Marvel movies. Okay, so let's chill let's, out, everybody. Let's wrap Back up off. and talk about this Matrix reboot. I'm actually really excited to talk about this. Are you really? Incredibly excited. What are your thoughts on the original? Um, Let's not start there. Let's start with the news first, because I, I can comment on the original. Okay, well, the news is Zach Penn, who... Uh, Don't know who that is. Well, he just he wrote X Men: The Last Stand. That's and he's, unfortunate. He's writing uh, Spielberg's Ready Player One that's due out next year, I think, next Christmas, I think, uh, if it didn't get moved. But anyway, he's he's a working writer. Um, he's pinning the Matrix, and it was reported originally that this was, this was going to be a reboot or remake. But he since has tweeted out uh, a few things about the project that. He doesn't even think that it should be remade or rebooted. That it's going to be a continuation in the way that Rogue One sort of supplements Star Wars. Um, remake and reboot. He doesn't want those words to belong to it. Um, he just wants to set more stories in this universe because he thinks it's a brilliant idea. Um, and then he, he finally he finished with the point. Between Logan, Legion, and Deadpool, does anybody want... Uh, Fox to stop in their X-Men universe and he said no not him um, that he he plans on he plans on branching out it's an it's an interesting take I actually can appreciate that point of view so I think that the concept of the film 
definitely warrants a sequel. And the Wachowski sisters knew that because obviously it spawned two of them and then an animated uh, supplement. But And video games and oh, yeah, additional absolutely. content in general, yeah. The uh, the influence that this franchise has on pop culture is uh, extremely significant. So it makes absolute sense to continue to do this. My problem is the last two movies are almost irrelevant because I just don't like them. So <laughs> I would I would welcome it, but I'm weary because I don't I, I want this to be the good one. And I don't. I know that that's an obvious statement. Of course, every movie that comes out, I want it to be good. But if it's just going to be uh, in the same similar direction that the last two were in, then I don't want any part of it. And I don't feel like you have anything to offer at this point anymore. Because I mean, yeah, th- those are sequels too. Those were continuations. Those are uh, building blocks of the entire franchise. So this is one of those things where it's simply a wait and see game. It- it's just I'm not gonna get excited until see I see more about it. Uh, the one thing that I think you're particularly excited about is the rumored casting of Michael B. Jordan. 100%. It's uh, You're the biggest Michael B. Jordan fan that has not seen Creed or Fruitvale Station. Yeah, well, I'm a bigger I'm a bigger fan of Friday Night Lights. Last last year, I watched from I watched Friday Night Lights from beginning to end for the first time and absolutely fell in love with it. It's one of my all time favorite TV shows now. Big fan. Peter Berg, amazing. Uh, the <laughs> Look, let's let's be honest here. Let's let's, let's uh, be honest here. Let's call it like it is. Let's call a spade a spade. Jay. Most people, most people, only like one Matrix movie. And in in I love the Matrix when it came out. There, it was the, like the first time in a long time since I was like a little kid. Did you ever have like a movie when you were younger that you would go to the video store and you would re rent? Like you would take it back and just re-rent it again. The Born Identity and the Recruit, starring okay. Colin Farrell. Okay, I when I was really young, I would re-rent. <laughs> oh, and a, Good Burger, a Good bunch Burger. of movies like the Transformers animated movie was one of those ones that I would just re-rent it over and over and over again. And this was one of those movies in 1999. I was obsessed with the original Matrix. You were allowed to watch it. Yes, it was great. It was so good. Because you would have been like, what, 12 at that point? Yeah, I was in middle school. Um, and I I was just so into this movie. And rightfully so. It's a groundbreaking movie. I, it, I, I don't know if up to that point I'd ever seen something that modern that was so groundbreaking. Things that I'd never seen before. the How, how everything looked. How the action was executed. The concept of it. How how grounded and science fiction it was at the exact same time. It was all incredible. Did you see the Phantom Menace that year? I did see the Phantom Menace. And even, even that movie, I didn't think that I liked <laughs> after coming out of it. I mean, I was, that movie is still groundbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely it was set the stage for visual effects, but it was also like over the top cartoony. And that wasn't what I wanted from my star Wars movie. We're not so, talking oh, about that. You were okay. We're not talking about that. Okay. Um, this movie, as far as I'm concerned, we got one. Yeah, I agree. And with that being the case, of course, of course. I was going to say, does that, does that make it warrant this sequel even more? Yes. Because you, a, 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 you have a chance to write the ship? Yes. Or is it a tired moot point? No. Because no. at a time where everything right now everything is trying to be franchised and like we're trying to do that why not like let's take one let's take a property that hasn't really been milk dry and let's try to make it really good i want the kevin feige of the matrix universe let's fucking go let's do this well hold on let's let me screech the brakes there cowboy because you know the studio that runs the matrix i know <laughs> It's Warner Brothers. Is the one that also brought us a Harry Potter <laughs> and franchise. They, they don't even have a Kevin Feige for DC. So I know. Kevin Feige for The Matrix. I think... You know my, who doesn't need to be the Kevin Feige for The Matrix? The Wachowski sisters. I don't want them anywhere I don't near think this. they're good filmmakers. I don't want them anywhere near And it's this. funny because we, you, we were just talking uh, so highly about the original Matrix. I yeah. think they're one-hit wonders. 
I agree. I with do that. not. I do not like the Wachowski sisters as filmmakers. I, I really don't. I have not seen Jupiter Ascending. Oh my god! One of the worst movies I've ever seen. You know what? One of the worst movies I've ever seen. Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas sucks. That movie is trash. They did cast uh, Matthew Fox as Racer X and Speed Racer, though. That's pretty cool. Matthew Fox is not a great actor. You're a moron. I'm sorry. He is not. You can debate I whether, he, Lost. whether he deserves to be in movies or not. He was not even the best part of Lost. Okay. <laughs> James Sawyer was the best part of Lost. James Sawyer? Yeah. His name is James Ford. James Sawyer is the best part of Lost. That's that's a hot take. Completely false. It's not a hot take at all. It is a hot. Take. It's a, it's not even a take. Period. It's just factually wrong. He's so butthurt right now. I wish that's you guys could the see most him. ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> we can have that debate some other time. Regardless, you think you think that Josh Holloway is a better actor than Matthew Fox? One hundred percent. No, no, God, no. <laughs> Josh Holloway is so. Have one you note. seen the Colony? <laughs> It's just called Colony for one, and you Whatever. haven't seen it either. I have it. I'm, I'm sort of trolling, but that's that's ridiculous. I don't even know if acting was the best. They should get Matthew Fox to ben be Linus in this Matrix a- room. I can see Matthew Fox in this Matrix sequel right here. Uh, ben Linus, what's his name? Michael, Michael Emerson. Michael Emerson might have been the best actor on Lost. Agree? You're just rubbing your face. You seem exhausted right now. Yeah, so we agree that it it, it does warrant it. I th- this my attitude would be completely different if it was a reboot. Well, do you want do you want a sequel, a reboot, or a prequel? So, so depend based on what he tweeted though, he said that if he was going to recast Keanu Reeves, it would be with Keanu Reeves. Like again, he is making it very apparent that he has no interest in rebooting anything. But the other side of the coin the the other rumors that Michael B Jordan is playing a young Morpheus. Right, that is something I don't like. Because I look, if we're going to tell a story before what we know in the first Matrix, I'm completely fine with that because it is such a vast universe that we can explore. I mean, the movie is legitimately about a uh, a false reality that has, you know, basically if you follow the stuff that happened in the second one, there have been multiple ones, and I think that's a fascinating uh, story to explore. Even if you've seen some of the Animatrix stuff, it expands on the universe, and it's incredibly interesting. I don't know if that's the most... Is well, Animatrix good? I, it's not the most well-executed thing, but... I was going to say, I, I've never known it to be held in high regard. Go watch uh, Go watch Chris Stuckman's review of the Animatrix. He re- it's a sh- Should not watch Animatrix? No, because the actual Animatrix itself is a little bit exhausting. I'll be honest with you. How long is it? It's like an entire feature-length oh. film based of short stories. It's like an anthology okay. movie. Um, but they're not really tied together much at all. But it, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, and it sort of... Te- it, it shows you what other stories can be told in this universe. And they're, that's fascinating. I don't really care to have another movie that even has connective tissue to this. Uh, I believe John Campia made that point about doing something 20 years in the after the events. Are the, is there even supposed to be 20 years after the events? I don't even really remember what happened in the last matrix. Like let's just distance ourselves from this. That seems like the best idea to me like in the way that Rogue One obviously it had to do with a larger story but the fact that there weren't a lot of known characters like in this universe you know that we were privy to outside of that movie i think it benefited from that it was able to have it stand on its own that's what i would love to see with this the idea and the concept in general is already fascinating enough let's just be creative inside of that world that's been developed yeah i'm with you i'm with you i i think the more i'm thinking about this michael b jordan thing i'm thinking that what i would love to see is a combination of the two like i would maybe if they had enough to where they could do it 20 years later with Keanu with um the Trinity die I have no idea I don't, I don't remember. remember I, don't I really don't um maybe if they could somehow I'll just say the the original cast back and maybe through flashbacks you could do a Morpheus thing but even that it's not really the the greatest idea for me well, but this- that that's how I could see it be done that way both what Zach Penn said in his Twitter 
his tweets and then the other reporting, both of those stay true if that is the case. This isn't, uh, I mean, I guess if you've never seen any of the Matrix stuff, it's kind of a spoiler, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So let me just illustrate why some of these stories could could be cool. I don't know if you remember this or not, but uh, there was a character in uh, the Matrix trilogy who was a young kid who was one of the only individuals that's ever woken himself up from oh, okay. the Matrix. And he was sort of like, I don't know, uh, Neo kind of took him under his wing. The Animatrix tells that story from the movie, like of him waking himself up. Like, that's a cool idea. It's a great idea. That's a cool Like, what else, does he have any abilities uh, because of that? Like, those are just so such interesting ideas. Michael B. Jordan, that casting... I think it's kind of a perfect role for him. He's like at the perfect age. Uh, he's got the perfect physique to sort of dive into. He's great body. Great body. Big fan of Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Let's get Justin Thoreau in there too. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, like he could, Justin Thoreau would be a great old Neo, but then again, so would Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I was gonna say since it's literally twenty years later, it could just be yeah Keanu. exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think I think the idea of it is great. I think the casting of <laughs> what it a horrible idea. I think the casting of it is is great. Uh, Michael B. Jordan. I want to see him in more stuff. Uh, I don't know why he's not as sought after as he is. I mean, I know he's got Black Panther coming up. Michael B. Jordan. I know he's, he's got, doing fine. He's no, uh, he's no Donald Glover. You know what I mean? <laughs> like let's 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 get him let's get him a little bit more active in some stuff. I want him in some big. And I know Creed was a big film, but I want to see him. Like I don't want to. I I like him as a villain in Black Panther. I think that's going to be great. But I want to see him. You know, I want a headlining role. I don't want to. I don't want him on the undercard of the fight. Jay, you've literally, <laughs> you're saying all this without having seen. The two movies that I'm, put him on the I'm map. I'm talking about a big, a huge, gigantic property. I'm talking okay. about a blockbuster property. Okay. As a as a title fight, I don't want him on the undercard. He if he's a villain in Black Panther, he's on the undercard. How much do you think Ryan Coogler wishes Michael B. Jordan was Black Panther? I don't know, but like I think I think he put Michael B. Jordan in Black Panther because he was salty. What's his name? Bo- Bozeman? Chadwick Bozeman, yeah. Great. He was probably he's uh, great. Yeah, he was good. Oh, he's so I good. Just, I just think it's funny. I would love to see Ryan Coogler find out that <laughs> the day that Chadwick Bozeman was cast. Just to see the tears <laughs> run down his face. Yeah. It could have been Michael. <laughs> I'll never get the chance to direct him as Black Panther. You could have been my Panther. <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah, I think it's all in the details with this, and it's a wait-and-see game. It's I, a developing story. It is a developing story. Even in the past four days, it's kind of changed a little bit. So, uh, And, and it, it, uh, let's be honest, it's a little silly we're even talking about it. Cause it's, why? Because this news just broke. And movie, it's like four days ago. But movie news like this, flames like this burn out, and they fall into production hell. I mean... You know what I'm saying? Like this is it's interesting to speculate about. You can say that about literally anything. I know, I know, and and that's fine, but it is we're sort of uh we're sort of we are we are the ones generating the hype about this. Not not us specifically, but I think like the movie community discussing this stuff, which is good, but you know, it it it, it could just peter out and be in, fall into nothing. Look at look at the Batman Joe Manganiello just came out, I think it was yesterday, and said that he doesn't know if he's still Deathstroke. <laughs> he literally doesn't know? Yeah, he doesn't know. <laughs> Is that something that, like, they were like, well, we'll figure it out? Like, were they just like... Who knows? Okay, yeah. But we, all, we don't best of luck to, to Ben Affleck, though. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Whatever uh, he's doing. He's He completed rehab. Oh, yeah, that's great. Congratulations. Whatever, he, whatever he's doing right now. Hopefully he's writing the fucking Batman movie. Anyway, um, I think that about does it for this uh, episode of Weekly. Do you have anything else? I'm good, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to all our new listeners. Make sure to go to our YouTube channel for more additional content. Obviously, if you're listening to this right now and you like what you hear, you can stick around on the YouTube channel of SK Plus, or you can come join us on our podcast feed for additional content. That's wherever podcasts are found. 
You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at SightSoundPod. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash SightSoundPod. My name is Jay Williams. You can find me at Jay Williams, J to the A to the Y to the E on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same for both. Ryan, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at WhatUpSnell. Please rate and review Sight and Sound on iTunes. If you have an iPhone, it's easier than ever to do that. Just go to your podcast app. Give us a star rating, and if you don't want to write a review, just leave a comment and say, hey, whatever. Uh, we greatly appreciate your support. Um, and also, if you're watching Legion, there are two episodes left, so make sure that you're not only watching that, but joining us on our Let's Talk Legion podcast, available anywhere podcasts are found. That's all I got. Later. Bye-bye.